Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn a boring interior wall into a really neat barnwood style accent wall, just like the one you see right behind me. Hey everyone, Ryan with RNG Products, and today I have a fun, cheap, and easy project for you. I recently created a nice barnwood accent wall on our family room, and I really love the way it turned out. And as you can tell, I'm sitting inside my home studio slash office, and this is where I produce most of my daily video content. And I really wanted to spruce up the wall you see right here behind me. So I went ahead and shot a video on how I make these accent walls. They're really easy to do. They're very affordable. If you're in the business of trying to make money, this is a great project that small businesses or homeowners would love to have on their wall. And as you'll see in this video, it's very easy to do. So if you guys like this kind of content, be sure you subscribe to the channel, like and comment. Let's just jump right into this project. All right guys, for today's project, let's go over a couple cool factors. One, this is easy to do. Number two, it's gonna be very easy on the wallet and almost any skill level can do something like this. So as you can see here, I'm just applying some stain to these four by eight sheets. Now I just went down to my local Home Depot and they sell a five millimeter four by eight sheet and they call it a like underlayment type of sheet. So all I did was measure my wall space to figure out exactly how many sheets I would need. Now, since I've already done a couple projects like this, I just wanted to share a few tips that I've learned along the way. Since you're already working with a five millimeter sheet of plywood, that top veneer layer is very thin. So you just wanna be really careful with what type of uh, stain or paint that you're applying to the surface. Just pay attention. I've had a couple of those veneers bubble up in the past when I went a little too heavy on certain stain. Now the really fun part about a project like this, it's totally up to you what colors you want to use to get that desired look. You'll notice on some of the stains I went really light and on the whitewash I had to really apply a liberal amount to get that right look I was looking for. So once your finishes have fully dried, by now you probably realize how squirrely and wobbly these real thin 4x8 sheets are. I originally was going to rip these panels down lengthwise and then use my miter saw to cut these at different lengths to give me a random pattern on the wall. After trying a couple different setups on the table saw, I realized there just wasn't a really safe way to cut these long sheets down, so I opted for option number two. And that's one of the things I love about woodworking. Nothing is set in stone, and it's all about being creative and coming up with a different way to tackle the project. So I went ahead and grabbed one of my favorite tools in the shop, my Festool track saw, and I decided to simply cut these 4 by 8 sheets in half, giving me two sheets of each color. I'm going to tackle this kind of like laying a hardwood floor down. And if you don't have access to a track saw like this, I know Craig makes an alternative version that will work with any skill saw that you probably already own. Or you could always make your own utilizing a spare piece of angle iron or any type of stock that you know has a straight edge. Just be sure that you measure the distance from the edge of your skill saw to the blade and compensate for that when clamping that board down to the plywood. Simply dial in your table saw blade to a perfect 90 degrees. Now that I'm only working with a 4x4 sheet, it's much more manageable and I can get it through the table saw much safer. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy my fingers and don't want to risk losing one. For this project, I set my table saw fence at 5 inches. This is going to allow me to get 9 total strips out of each 4x4 section. And again, this is totally up to you and how you want your wall to look. On my previous wall, I did much smaller strips at three and a half inches. Now simply just finish ripping down the remaining four by four sheets. So 
Once I finish ripping the boards down, I like to take a little bit of time, organize each plank, and then do a quick sample layout of how I think it's going to look best on the wall before I start the installation process. Once you're satisfied with the layout, time to collect all the pieces and bring them inside. For this project, I elected to start at the top of the wall and I arranged my first plank very close to the ceiling and put a level on it to make sure I had a very good reference point to start with. Right here, take your time. You don't want to get it crooked and have that problem follow you all the way down the wall. Really the main thing you want to do here is it doesn't matter which end of the wall you start on. You always want to use a different size starting piece so you don't have pieces that are identical to each other. You want more of that scattered pattern look just like how you would do a hardwood floor. One of the advantages of using the 5mm underlayment is it doesn't require any type of liquid adhesive behind the planks. I simply used a 3 quarter inch brad nail and that held these planks to the wall nice and secure. Now if you encounter an electrical outlet like I have here, first things first, head out to your electrical box and make sure you turn the breaker off to those outlets. Once you're sure the power is off, go ahead and disassemble. Just take a little extra time here and cut your pieces to fit around